Welcome everyone to another episode of Get Tech Smart Global Explosion, where I'm traveling around the world, virtually, of course, because it's a lot cheaper, and just talking to people in the tech sector, women, and underrepresented tech talent that are just slaying uh, when it comes to tech innovation. So today we're going to be talking about legal technology, and I am really excited to have Terry uh, Ma head uh, all the way. Where are you right now? You, are you in Australia? I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A huge time difference, but we made it work. Uh, I'm really excited to, to have you here. Uh, you're the director at uh, the Legal Innovation Center. So can you talk a little bit about your journey into legal innovation and what does that even mean? Yeah, abs absolutely. And firstly, Flo, thanks so much for having me. I mean, it's absolute delight to be here um, and uh, also to come to you from Australia. Yeah. Um, my journey really was as um, a practicing lawyer. So I started life as a practicing lawyer a long time ago. And I guess I've now I've moved into the recovering lawyer phase <laughs> because I'm, I'm not actually practicing law anymore. But my my journey was really kind of through practice and then as a legal educator and then in a way combining those two roles in what I do now. So I lead the Centre for Legal Innovation at the College of Law and uh, we're a think tank which is uh, really focused on monitoring the tr changes that are taking place, the transformation of, of the legal ecosystem and then translating that into kind of bite-sized action steps for, for everybody in practice. And so that has obviously brought us very squarely into the legal tech space and the innovation space because, you know, that's what transformation is all about. So right. uh, we've been doing that for a little over six years now and loving it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because there's so much that's going on with legal tech. And I think if anything, the pandemic has really helped to uh, accelerate uh, the need, right? It's it's like, all right. Yeah. We had to work from home and now how are lawyers supposed to continue to push forward and still work remotely? Um, so when we're hearing the term legal tech, you know, what exactly, you know, does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. There's kind of two terms that are floating out there and, and which one is used or if both of them are used kind of de seems to depend a little bit on where you're placed around the world. So Legal tech for us here in Australia basically means any technology solution. So anything where you use or deploy technology, we would put under that broad umbrella of legal tech. But in other parts of the world, legal tech is, is used to explain the technology that is business facing uh -huh. and law tech is used to explain the technology that is consumer facing. Oh, but wow. as I say, for us, we we wrap them together because we find that a lot of the folks that are developing technology often have that um, facing towards lawyers, but they also have it facing towards consumers. Yeah. I, and I hear, you know, over here sometimes, I think I read an article where I saw the distinction between legal technology and then contract technology. So contract technology will be your CLM tools, your contract management tools, uh, drafting tools, and then legal tech would probably fall under e-discovery, billing solutions, uh, et cetera. So uh, how do you feel about that distinction? Yeah, again, it, it's get, again, it's one of those ones where there's not a standardization of terminology, yeah. right? So I, I guess the way that I look at it is that you that legal tech is the um the umbrella yeah. word, but within that technology there's specialization. Right. So there might be deal tech, the tech focused on um, you know, MA work. There might be reg tech, which is focused on compliance work, or as you say, contract right. tech that's focused on contract work. So that's a way that I try and wrap my head around it, that it's it's, there's the broad kind of all-encompassing thing and right. then there are definitely bundles or collections or clusters of technology um, that are specialised for specialist areas. Now, I think that's a great way to put it. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you know, we're, the legal tech sector, um, you know, last year I, I was writing posts about, oh, my God, it's booming. There are millions <laughs> of dollars that are being made. 
And now I'm seeing uh, articles and posts that are like, is funding drying up for legal tech? So what, what's going on with legal tech right now? Is, is the economy having an impact on funding? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's it feels like the answer to that question is how long is a piece of string? Right. You know, it's <laughs> it's kind of it's it's different in different places. But but of course, you know, um, a slowing of the economy is going to affect everything. It, it's right. very likely to affect funding in uh, technology as well. I mean, for me. I kind of look at it as as there's still a, a lot of ideas flowing. There's still a lot of technology that's being developed. But I think we will continue to see some consolidation. So we will see um, some tech that's been developed. It's working. It'll be bought by other companies and they'll kind of bring a whole bunch rather than trying to grow it organically. They'll be able to buy solutions that they'll right. combine together. We've seen that for a while. I think we'll see more oh, of yeah. it. Um, I certainly think we will continue to see a lot of those ideas uh, pursued and there will be funding for them. But yeah, I think I think we'd, we'd be unrealistic to expect that if, if the economy is slowing, we won't see some impact um, of that flowing on to tech more broadly, but legal tech as well. Right. And and globally, uh, I mentioned to you before we started recording is that I, you know, I have fantastic counterparts from all over the world that are in legal tech. And, and one thing I think that I see that's common is uh, the jokes that float around and the difficulty in, in selling uh, legal tech solutions uh, to in-house lawyers or, or law firms. Uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it it's <laughs> tough. I mean, I I I think that you know, I I mean, many people have said this before. It's certainly not original from me. But tech is an enabler for innovation, yeah. and so I think there's a few things going on with respect to that sale. Firstly, that the folks that are buying it very often haven't got clear in their own mind about what it is that they need and what they want right. to buy. So, what do their clients need? What do their customers need? Um, what what are they actually looking for? What features are they actually looking for before they go to market and try and find it? So I think that's often one of the kind of the first issues. Um, you don't ever want to make a tech purchasing decision based on the fact that that your pal down the road bought yeah. something and you think that's a good idea. It's got to be customized yeah. and relevant for you. So I think I think that's the problem. As a result, if you haven't done that homework, if you really haven't gone through that process and really thought about what you need, then you can you can go out with a half baked idea about what you need, and then what you get is not what you were expecting. So there's right. kind of a disconnect between expectations and needs that happens as a result of that. And then it's a situation where you acknowledge that and you go back to the drawing board and you you work it out, or it feeds into uh, something that might have been sitting there as an assumption anyway, which is tech never works out. You know, it's not it's not great. We don't want it. Um, so I, I, I guess it kind of, it depends. Have you done your homework before you start? Um, if you have, are you getting what you need? You can try out a bunch of tech on a bunch of different platforms now. Are you taking advantage of that? Do you even know about that? But it wrapped around all of that as well is it's part of a massive change process. I mean, you spoke about the pandemic earlier. Look at that massive change that that brought about in right. using technology. And so there's just a bit of a phobia and a reluctance about change generally that you've got to push through. So yeah, it it can be tough, but I think as the the purchasers are kind of becoming more sophisticated and thoughtful about what they want, um, a lot of those previous legacy assumptions are being pushed through now as well. Yeah. And what do you think is the shape going forward, especially for women uh, in, in legal tech? Because I, I am seeing an increase with, you know, more women uh, tech startup, uh, you know, offering legal technology uh, solutions. And thank goodness for that, right? Yeah. I mean, um, there's just been such a massive underrepresentation of women in tech. Um, and I, I hope that we see more. And, and I think that, you know, we've we've started to see that 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 tech has to be nurtured and AI in particular has to be kind of thought about carefully and reviewed because we've seen that it can build in biases. And right. some of the biases that they can that can build in kind of does the range of um 
working against diversity. So the more diversity we can inject into the development of the technology in the first place, yeah. then the better that technology has to be to serve uh, everybody as well. So I'm I'm hopeful that we will see more women in the tech space. I just think it's critical. Um, but and I think that we will. I do think that that's happening. I think that we will. But I also think that it that we have to purposefully focus on that um, to to just uh, basically make the whole industry more diverse and more inclusive. Yeah, I I agree with you 100, percent and that's why I invited you uh, to come <laughs> chat with me um, because you are singing my song. Um, so. <laughs> So I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today just to talk about the, the shape of the legal tech industry. Uh, before I let you go, I want to know, what is your favorite legal tech tool? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a bit of a fan of the no-code platforms, I have to say. That's good, um, yeah. I, I aspire to be a good citizen <laughs> developer. I think I'm a terrible citizen yeah. developer. But but I do I do really like those because I I think that they make tech accessible for people, kind of get them interested in it, but also they produce great solutions, really right. easy, straightforward solutions that kind of allow you to, for example, automate just about anything. So, yeah. um, any kind of low code, no code platform, um, and I can think of a few. For example, in Australia, Joseph is probably our leading platform here. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a fan. I do love that. <laughs> I love it. Listen, I'm right there with you. I like easy, so I'll do no code completely. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and everyone else. Thank you for tuning in to learn more about what's going on with legal tech around the world. Thank you so much, Terry. And stay tuned for more episodes of this little mini series that I'm doing as part of the LinkedIn Accelerator Program Technology and innovation.